Hello and welcome to the first of three films about polymerization. This one deals with addition polymerization and so it's the reaction of alkenes to make polymers. Okay, hopefully by the end of this film you'll know what an addition polymer is and how you can resent, represent its formation from alkene monomers and in addition to that you'll be able to look at a polymer chain and decide what monomers we might have used to make that polymer chain. Okay, first of all, let's just introduce what polymerization is. Okay, polymers are basically just very, very long molecules that are made from monomers, which are um, basically repeating building blocks. So a little bit like daisy chains. The daisy chain is the polymer, and the daisies are the monomers that we use to make that chain. So they're like the monomers are the links in the chain. Okay, and there's two different types of polymerization. Okay. There's addition polymers, which require a carbon-carbon double bond, and there's condensation polymers, which involve the loss of a small molecule like water. Okay? Addition just takes monomers and joins lots of them together. Condensation takes monomers and joins together, but there's a side product, which is this little molecule that gets lost. Okay, anyway. Let's, seeing as we're talking about addition polymerization, let's have a look at why alkenes polymerize in the first place. So why is it that I can join lots of similar alkenes together? Okay, so if I take, this is lots and lots of monomers represented side by side. And these arrows are supposed to be showing me the double bonds opening up. So if I was to break one of these double bonds, I'm kind of rubbing it out here by drawing it and painting it white, then I would have a spare bond sticking out here and a spare bond sticking out there. Similarly, I could do that to the next door molecule, and now these two molecules can join together, and this one can join to the next one. Okay? We often use an initiator, something called an initiator, to do this reaction, but we don't need to worry about those in the Year 12 waste course. What we do need to know is that alkenes can open up their double bonds and when they do so they're going to form these very very long chains many millions of atoms long in some cases okay where the monomer that we used is basically represented repeating again and again and again in this chain okay so I've got this molecule here without its double bond now there's another one okay the double bonds have opened up and we've joined lots and lots of molecules together. So that's why alkenes will form polymers. It's because they're unsaturated and we can open their double bonds up and join lots and lots of them together. Now if we're asked to show the repeating unit in an exam, what we're basically doing is we're representing the polymer chain without drawing all of it, which is great because, as I say, it can be millions of atoms long, so that could be potentially a, a life's work of just drawing one molecule. So what we're doing here is we're taking these ethene molecules. We're making a polymer called polyethene. So that's often used in plastic bags and stuff like that. A lot of these polymers are plastics. Okay, we're taking lots of ethenes, a many-sided shape in maths is a polygon, so many sides. So these are many of the same monomer, so this is a polymer, and we've got lots of ethenes, so it's polyethene. If I take three of these monomers, I'll make a polymer chain that is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long, because I've got six carbons in double bonds joining together. And I can put a bracket around this to show that it's going to repeat outside of those brackets for however many molecules I've got. Okay, And quite often in a test or exam, we're asked to show a polymer chain that contains three of these repeating units. Now, these aren't the repeating units themselves. These are the monomers that went together to make this polymer chain. Okay, But remember... If I'm showing the repeating unit in an exam, I'd need to have the double bonds gone, the monomers joined together, brackets at the end to show that now my repeat, this, this is basically just repeating outside of the brackets, and these bonds going out of the brackets to show that there's a continuation here. Okay, so that's how I show repeating units. I could also draw polyethene as simply one repeating unit, but as I say, in an exam, they're often asking you to draw a length of the poly polymer chain that shows three repeating units.
Okay. Right. Things to watch out for when you're drawing these repeating units. Um, well, one of the main problems that people have can be avoided if you draw your alkenes like this. That is to say, you've got your double bond here and four groups attached to it. If you just look at what this molecule is, this is propene. So I could also draw propene in this way. Okay. Now, the trouble with doing that is if I then take this monomer and join it together lots and lots of times to make a polymer, I can end up thinking that my repeating unit has three carbons in it because this monomer has three carbons in it. But what we can see, hopefully, that the person who does that, what they've done wrong, okay, is that they haven't noticed that it's going to be these two carbons that form the backbone of this chain. This one's not going to be in the polymer chain. It's going to be sticking up. So as we can see here, the correct repeating unit shows that we've got two carbons and one sticking up here. So this CH3 group is not forming part of this chain. It's sticking up off it. And it's much, much easier to get these questions right if every time you're given an alkene, whether by a structure like this or by name, so we're making polypropene here, or polypropylene, which is quite often used in crates and, and things like that. But anyway, it's a way of avoiding any mistakes is to make sure that you always draw your monomers when you're thinking about them as this arrangement with your two carbons in the double bond and then groups, the four groups sticking above and below those two carbons. And then it's quite simply a matter, as before, of just getting rid of the double bonds and then sticking out these spare bonds from it, and there's your repeating unit. But once again, if you are asked to draw three repeating units, then you ought to be drawing six carbons, not the nine that you would get if you thought this was your repeating unit. Okay? Now, the other type of question that you get is, uh, is one in which they've shown, rather than showing you the monomers and saying what chain will form, or show the polymer chain represented as a repeating unit, is to show you the polymer chain and say what monomers must have gone together to make it. Now, all I've got to do here is to remember that this polymer here, which is called polyvinyl chloride or PVC, and it's used, well, mainly to make gutters and, and, and plastic pipes. Um, if I break this up every two carbons, then I'll be close to imagining what the monomer units were like, except that they would have had double bonds in them. Okay, So what this shows is that this chain could be represented as this one repeating unit, repeating n times, so any whole number of times, brackets at the end of it and bonds coming out to show that there's a continuation. So there's my repeating unit. As soon as I've spotted the repeating unit in the polymer, polymer chain, all I have to do is just to draw it again, but with a double bond. And I suppose just to keep the, the format that we, well, not that we prefer, but that leads to fewer mistakes, there's what used to be called vinyl chloride or chloroethene. Okay. So anyway, there's a polymer chain broken down into the monomers that made it up. Now you can kind of get slightly trickier questions. This one doesn't, these three polymer chains all actually have the same monomer. Okay, because if I break these chains up every two carbons, I'll see that every one of these chains, although they look quite different, the chains themselves, that is, every one of them is made up of the same monomer, which is actually called styrene. So these polymers are called polystyrene, and there's lots of different types of polystyrene, which affects its properties. But every single one of them has two carbons, a benzene ring on, whoops, that's a horrible looking benzene ring, but hopefully you can see what I mean, a benzene ring on one of the carbons, and hydrogens on the other two carbons, oh, well, on, on the other carbon, two of them, and hydrogen on the carbon that's got a benzene ring. So this is the monomer that I use to make every one of these three polymer chains, even though the polymer chains do look a bit different. I'm just breaking it every two carbons and making sure 
that every one of my pairs is the same. Okay, because when I make an addition polymer, all my monomers are the same, and I don't get any byproducts. Okay, so just to illustrate what I mean by that point about making sure that they're the same, if I was given this polymer chain, and I'm not drawing all the hydrogens in it, okay, but let's say I was given the length of polymer chain that maybe had a benzene ring here. My benzene rings are horrible today, and um, another one there and perhaps another one here and maybe another one there okay now remembering that to think about what monomer was used to make this polymer I have to break the chain every two carbons well um, maybe if I do the wrong way in blue I could break the chain there and there and there and I'd be getting this monomer and this monomer two different monomers and I want to avoid having two different monomers so the correct way which I'm going to show you in green also involves splitting the chain every two carbons but the way I'm doing it here gives me identical monomers every time so that's just a little thing to watch out for when you're splitting your chain every two carbons make sure that the monomers you get are all identical to one another when you had an addition polymer okay so our aim at the start of this film was to understand what an addition polymer is and how to represent the formation of one from alkene monomers. Hopefully that's clear now. And hopefully you can also see how a polymer chain can be broken, or not broken down, not how we break it down, but how you can look at a polymer chain and decide what monomers we must have used, or what monomers we must have joined together in order to make that polymer. As usual, if there's any questions or any areas that you find a little bit confusing, come and find me or post a comment on YouTube and I'll do my very best to help answer those questions.